anchors up, sails at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. Kyle, I hate you. <laughs> oh, the shenanigans in, in our Discord, Jared. The shenanigans. <laughs> I know I've I know I've left it in the podcast in the past. So it's probably not like a total surprise that like because Kyle and I record our channels differently. He records his vocals locally. I record mine locally. We do what basically every sort of podcast YouTube thing does where we just do a clap, which makes it easy to synchronize the sound. Right. Um, but he went one, two, three instead of three, two, one, the time, the clap. And I and, and it it pissed both Austin and I off something terribly. <laughs> Uh, then that's, well, that's what we're doing. Man, now we're doing li- we're doing two episodes in one right now, so we probably should get started. Because like, all right, so here, here's 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 what was happening. Here's what was happening. I said, "Hey Kyle, let's do a mock class for 2025." He's like, "Oh really?" It's like, I mean, yeah, that'd be fun, but I'm like, yeah, but there's really nothing else going on. I go, we we got some, we can do some final calls. We, we have a, a, a list of six 2024 guys. We do some final calls on that and then and then we can move on and we can just sort of do the class of 2025. The mock uh, again. What do you mean again? We're doing final calls on just a couple 2024 guys and doing a mock class for 2025. We haven't done a mock class for 2025 before. It would be our first one. So. And then stuff started happening um and by stuff i mean i mean booms or at least one boom so far um kyle as who? uh as uh tony gerdeman uh sent here or messaged earlier who we get some notes uh, in the scarlet, chat scarlet gray and boom yeah um and, and there's some there's some dates coming up still um but yeah, Justin Scott, like, did not have him in the mock a couple weeks ago. Um, happy to be wrong. The, the hype, the hype all felt a little too, it felt a little too good to be true, to be honest with you. It, felt, it all felt a little too good to be true. And I'm like, okay, this is like our post-visit hype period, the, the, the post-visit honeymoon where everything feels optimistic and yada, yada, yada. But uh, as of Sunday, as of just like a half hour or so before we hit record tonight, Justin Scott commits to the Ohio State 2024 class. Uh, This is a five star prospect um, across the board, a five star prospect. Uh, According to the composite, he's the 14th best player in the country, the third best defensive lineman and the number one player out of the entire state of Illinois. Um, his composite score is 0.9939, which for anyone um, keeping track at home is redonkulous. Very, very. It's good. Yes. As Austin says, it good. <laughs> he good football. Push man. Push man far. Uh, get a certain Polynesian running back on board and the chips may fall in place. I I agree. Get I mean I I think linebacker. I feel I I, I still did I not say linebacker. You said running back. Did I? That's a weird switch to make. Um. Yeah. Kate. I I believe you. I I believe you. You you don't you y'all don't have to like jump on Kyle's side like you normally do. Um. <laughs> I, I'll just believe you. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, you had KVA and all of a sudden you're feeling real good about the interior of this defense for a little while. Um, yeah, so this is a huge surprise. Um, like, again, there are a lot of people feeling optimistic about Justin Scott. I wasn't one of them. Um, I would say to this point, you know, now keep him. N- now you got to keep him. Mm-hmm. Um, but like. I mean, he's it's not it's not like he's a South Florida kid or a Los Angeles kid. He's still a Midwest kid. Chicago's not that far away. Um but you know, he's still a top 5 guy and you got to keep him. Yeah, we were just complaining recently about how we haven't had a uh had huge hog 
mollies on the uh, inside of the defense. Uh, this is a guy thrilled to keep away from Bama, Michigan, and Georgia. Yeah, I would say Notre Dame as well. Um, we yeah, should no, own no. Chicago. Uh, that that I mean, that's as much as Northwestern likes to claim Chicago. That's Notre Dame city first and foremost. Um, but I yeah, agree with you. Six, I think we should own Chicago. Six four three ten. Yeah, this is this is your plug them up type of player, right? We're in the middle of your defensive line. Kyle, is it ironic that one of Justin Fry's first big wins as he is the primary recruiter here because they were originally looking at Justin Scott as an offensive lineman? One of one of Fry's big first like big out of state wins uh, is a defensive lineman. Yeah, I know. That's kind of funny when um, looking back at that now. You know, I, I still I still think he gets one of those those big out of state offensive tackles to finish out that to finish out the 2024 class. But we're not getting into that. You're going to listen to the past two episodes to hear us talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle, there was also like another little mini, relatively mini piece of news, although maybe not super mini uh, over on 247.com that you brought my attention to. Yeah, another defensive lineman could can, can uh, State add another five star defensive lineman to this already amazing uh, recruiting class here. And we're talking about um kid out of Washington, DC, uh Dylan Stewart. Two not two crystal balls from two twenty four seven national guys, both placing Dylan Stewart to Ohio State, which is crazy um again number nine nationally number two edge rusher in the country number one player out of the dc area a composite score of nine nine six zero which uh to quote austin is good that's good um yeah he he good football uh hit man hard run fast push man far um yeah and what's what's extra puzzling like dylan stewart is a guy we've had in our mock classes in the past he wasn't in our most recent mock class um but we have had him in the mock classes in the past but what, what i think is extra i really i really only had ohio, ohio state taking two defensive ends this this series and Lightfoot and Houston are two guys who I basically have penned in already at this point. Um, now, I, there has been at least some talk from Berm. Uh, I know about Miami making a late push, which I as assume is financial because it's, it's basically what Miami can offer at this point. Um, so, I mean, maybe maybe Lightfoot is. And, you know, if he if he's can they even can they even offer finances? Uh, yeah, there's lots of money uh, in Miami. Um, they'll find it, but I, I wouldn't worry about that. The uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just it's interesting because I basically already in my mind had the defensive end class kind of wrapped up with, with Houston and Lightfoot. Um, and with a class that's already looking to be pretty damn big. And of course with Dylan Stewart, you make room for him. Like it doesn't matter. Dylan Stewart's like that kind of special. You make room for him. Right. Um, so like you make the numbers work at that point, but it's another interesting, you know, do, do they take all three of those guys? Does this lend credence to some rumors that Lightfoot might be going to Miami? Um, is is Houston not as solid as we originally thought? Don't know. But you know, there was a there's a double crystal ball from two big wigs ever 24-7 placing Dylan Stewart at Ohio State. Yeah, like absolutely. it's like it's like they got off of a phone call and and like both placed their like it was it was just like kind of bang bang like that. Yep. All right, Kyle, let's uh, speak. Speaking of Lightfoot, 
We have six players. We will be starting off with Lightfoot. We have six players who we will be making our final calls on for the 2024 class. So let's start with Lightfoot. Uh, he will be committing on the evening of July 3rd, which is the day that this episode drops. Um, we have our targets here set at Ohio State and Miami. I'm going to stick with Ohio State. Um, I, I'm going to stick with Ohio State. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to stick with Ohio State. Yeah, it's... It's tough. I mean, at this point, it would not surprise me either way. But yeah, as of we're as of when we're recording this, Jared, yeah, I would stick with Ohio State. But like many things in in, re, in the recruiting world, things change yeah. can change in an instant here. And, and and really, had those crystal if those late crystal balls hadn't come in on Dylan Stewart right before we started recording, I would have just said Ohio State and moved on. Like that really that the, the Dylan Stewart crystal ball is the only thing that's even making me hesitate at this point. Um, Cause like, and I a hundred percent trust Berm's reporting that Miami's making a push, but like he isn't saying that, you know, Miami moved into first place or that Miami's definitely going to get him now. He just said that they're making a push, which is like, of course they are. Like that's what they should be doing. Right. All right, Kyle. Um, next we have Elijah Moore. Uh, wide receiver, he will be announcing on July 4th. We had him in many of Ohio State's mock or many of our classes for Ohio State in the past. Um, maybe a bit of a spoiler. We didn't have him in the most recent mock class for Ohio State. So wh wh where do you think he's heading, Kyle? I think I think he's going to I think he's going to uh, stay there with the Seminoles. Yeah. I yeah, I, I think I don't think um, Ohio State are going to get be able to get more at the end here and just just not enough just not enough to to get to the finish line here for him at a certain point and i think maybe elijah moore is at, you know maybe that certain point recruiting an insane number of wide receivers is going to catch up with you as far as other teams going look at all the guys already in that room and they already have the number one receiver for this class. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think at a certain point, Brian Hartline's success will bite him a little bit. Just a little bit. And, you know, maybe Elijah Moore is, you know, some of that success coming back to haunt you. All right, Kyle. Um from Elijah to Elias, Elias Rudolph, um, native of the Cincinnati area, uh, will be announcing on July 3rd. Uh, he is a defensive end and edge rusher. I mean, if we can't get our fourth choice at wide receiver, I'm OK. Um, third or fourth. Third or fourth. I think I think with Elijah Moore going elsewhere, you might see Ohio State stop at three in this class. I think McKellen is three. I, I like I don't know. I, I have them both in my head as like three slash four. I don't necessarily have them separated. That's that's just my take on it. Um, yeah, Elias Rudolph, uh, like I said, uh, committing July 3rd, the day this episode drops. Cincinnati native currently playing in Florida at IMG. Um, what was a, a guy, a guy we've been watching for a while. Um, Kyle, where do you have him going? I think, I think he's, I think we're going to, I think we're going to see him in the other colors here. I don't, yeah. I don't think, I don't think uh, we'll, we'll see him in the scarlet and gray. Now nah, he's going up North. He is going up North for sure. All right, Kyle, on July 6th, uh, cornerback out of Indiana, Miles Lockhart, um, committing again, July 6th. Um, I have Miles Lockhart personally as a solid lock to Ohio State at this point. I don't even know who else to tell you might be in the running here. Agreed. Yeah, this is this is Ohio State here. Um, yeah, he's committing here uh, this week here. 
Um, another another kid here, Ohio State always find seems to find one person, one recruit out of the state of Arizona, it seems here or or around there. So or or at least it seems to be that way. But yeah, I, I think this is um Ohio State really likes really likes this uh kid here and and ultimately he's gonna to come to Ohio State. Yeah, the recruiting like rankings and such aren't huge, but I know Ohio State likes them a lot. So that's that's all I need to know. All right, Kyle. Now that those are those are true final calls. Those are absolutely like true final calls. We might be he bullied Rayola in Arizona. I'll take your word on that one. Um the, the, those four are like our true final calls. These next two are a little bit stretches. They're committing uh, in a few weeks. Um, Aaron Scott, who's a guy we have talked about a lot in recent weeks, uh, defensive back, cornerback, uh, according, depending on who you ask, the best player in the state of Ohio this year, um, plays out of the Dayton area. He will be committing Kyle on July 30th. On July 30th, um, it's basically Ohio State and Michigan. I've seen people throw like Notre Dame or Oregon in there, too. This is Ohio State and Michigan. And any other hats on the table are simply there for dressing. Uh, this is Ohio State versus Michigan. Yeah. And, and yeah, and you, you got to you got to keep the best players in the state of Ohio at Ohio State. And I I think that will be the case here with Aaron Scott when it's all said and done. He'll. He'll be staying in Ohio. I agree. Um, I think I, I saw this, uh, I believe, on the Buckeye huddle board. Someone pointing out that July 30th is Aaron Scott's dad's birthday. Uh, and his his dad's a huge Ohio State fan. It it would feel a little is a little like you do, do you schedule your commitment on your dad's birthday just to commit to his favorite team's rival? I, it, 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 it would feel odd. It would feel odd <laughs> unless he hates his dad's guts Esquire, or excuse me. Uh, gangland says, I mean, I, to my knowledge, they have a good relationship to my knowledge, um, or at least uh, it's not a it's not a put a knife into his heart relationship. I'll I'll say that much. <laughs> it's not that type of relationship. It would be an, the ultimate heel turn moment. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that that that's some WWE shit right there. That's. Yeah, no, that, that ain't right. That would not be right. And that is just straight up Hulk Hogan joining the New World Order right there. Uh, his dad says he would uh, show up in Ann Arbor in Ohio State gear if his son played there. Why does this feel like the new Chris Spielman situation? <laughs> All right. I, again, this one's a bit of a stretch. Uh, this one's uh, like a month out. Maybe this isn't actually a final call. Uh, but, you know, saying six final calls in the in the thumbnail sounds good, right? Um, KJ Bolden, uh, another guy who we've talked about a lot in recent weeks, uh, has announced the committing uh, commitment date for August 5th. Um, this. What this is a. This is a situation that I think last week we talked about, like Ohio State and Georgia primarily. Don't rule out Al Alabama. Mm, that I was I was just about to say. There's there's a new um, tide rolling in ah, here. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, um, it's they, they, yeah Alabama has been making a big big push here for for uh, Bolden here and and from everything that I've been hearing here, it, it, it's not Georgia that the Ohio state coaching staffs are worried about right now. It, it's Alabama. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, it would, it would suck if you're Georgia to miss out on both Woodyard 
and KJ Bolden. Yeah. Uh, Cause I've been saying for a couple weeks that like between Bolden and Woodyard, one of them goes to Ohio state. The other one goes to Georgia. And I have since been hearing that like Georgia's not where Woodyard's going to end up. It could be Ohio state. It could be USC. It could be a couple other options. But like like Bolden, Bolden was for sure going to go to Ohio State or, or Georgia. Well, now Alabama's creeping in, and it's just like it's it, it would feel real disheartening from a Georgia perspective to lose both of these guys, especially with Bolden being an in-state guy. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, final call, Kyle. Final call, KJ Bolden. Man, it, it's my heart. My heart wants to say yes. My heart really does, but I'm I'm good. I'm gonna say he's he he's gonna go somewhere else. He he won't come to Ohio State. You got to pick though. You can't say somewhere else. You can't I'll, say I'll somewhere say, else. I'll say I'll say that Alabama. I'll say Alabama with with what they've been doing recently and the recent visit there. I I think I'll give the little little edge to Alabama now. I'm I'm still going to I know recent reports are pushing Alabama. I'm still thinking Georgia. I still think Ohio State gets Woodyard. Um, so I think Woodyard leaves Georgia, comes to Ohio State. I think Bolden goes to Georgia. Um, I will say this, though. I say that with very little confidence. Like. I don't know. Like I just, just for the record, I'm not saying that with a ton of confidence. I, I'm. I still feel good that Ohio State gets one of the two. Um, uh, but I just don't feel confident saying which one of the two at this point. And uh, but I'm going to go final call Georgia with Woodyard coming to Ohio State. I, th I think that's what I said last week and the week before, and I'm just going to stick to it until I hear something rock solid to make me think otherwise. All right. All right. Um, Kyle, that's that's it for 2024 for for now. Um, and, that, and with that class, like if for those that we said that that would come to Ohio State and with what Ohio State has right now, I mean, right now they have the number two class, the best per average recruit in this uh, recruiting class here, too do they have a chance to take to finally get the best recruiting class? Yeah, a chance. I, I when, it, when you get down to like fractions of, of points, it's, it doesn't really matter to me that much. I, if you're just in there in the hunt with Georgia and Alabama, um, if you, if you're in that top three and it's, it's all very close, I'm not super concerned about actually getting the number one class. Um, but, you know, I do want to be in the mix for the number one class. Like, I, I want to be in that competition. Um, they they don't take enough guys. Oh, yeah. Austin says they don't take enough guys. Uh, Esquire says they might this year. Th this is the year where they might take a lot of guys. I mean, I've been doing mocks at 28. They had, a, they had a small class, last class, and they're about to lose a ton of juniors on top of their normal attrition this year. Um, this will be a big class. I've been saying 26 to 28. I'm at the point now where I'm I'm almost saying like 27, 29. But I still think 28 is the number for now. All right, Kyle, let's move on to 2025. Um, the early, early, early early Including hyper class. early 2025 mock class now is it ridiculous to do a mock class yes yes <laughs> yes jared the answer is yes <laughs> but it, it yes it's ridiculous to do a mock class this early it is it's 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 borderline stupid that being said 
it looks a lot better in the thumbnail and in the show title and the show notes if it's a mock class versus just here's some names to know. You know what I'm saying? It really is a marketing thing, if I'm being honest with everybody. That being said, I'm still trying my best here. It's an impossible task. It's an impossible ask. But I did my best to try to put together as coherent as possible a mock class for 2025 um, in July, on July 2nd of 2023. So let's do it. Um, layup quarterback Tavian St. Clair. Already committed. One of two guys currently in the class. Kyle, I feel good about this one. I feel good about this one. And you're like, oh, well, what about Dylan Rayola? Oh, uh, yeah, that Rayola. Uh, you, you know what? St. Clair from Bellefontaine, Ohio. He didn't go anywhere. They take two possibly, though. Agreed. I, I think it is worth noting that Ryan Montgomery, who is the younger brother of uh, an offensive tackle at Ohio State, um, is in this class as a quarterback. Um, I don't think it's ridiculous that they take two quarterbacks in this class. Am I predicting that at this time? I am not. Do I acknowledge that that's a decent possibility? I do. But I'm, I'm not mocking it at this time. Two running backs. Who, who do you think are two running backs, Arco? Well, I would I would look for any kids in the state of Ohio first. There's so if I, two good running backs in the state of Ohio, but I only have Ohio State ending up with one of them for the record. Well, if I'm looking at the 25 class here, um, I would say I would say Bo Jackson. Yeah. And out yes, of Cleveland. His, and yes, his name is Bo Jackson. Um, he's currently listed as an athlete on the recruiting services. Um, at this time, I'm going to call him a running back, but that could change. Never a bad idea to take Bo Jackson. Yeah, exactly. Except here's the thing. Like, do you want to try and live up to that? Did you really want to try and be a running back in football named Bo Jackson? Like, if there's ever a reason to not play running back... He should just go ahead and move the linebacker. I, th I think so, too, Austin. <laughs> I think so, too. That or go play baseball. Oh, wait. Um, yeah. Bo Jackson. Um, Marquise Davis is an in-state running back who I think is very talented. I'm not mocking him to Ohio State at this at this time. Um, however, I am going to mock uh, Jordan Davison, um, which... Goes against my better instinct, if I'm being honest, because he's a Mater Day kid. Uh, <laughs> and they never end up here. We always go after them. They never choose us. But Baker, he, I see that's the thing, though. I'm hoping Baker breaks the curse. I'm hoping Baker breaks the curse. Offensive tackle in the 2024 class. I, I hope he breaks the curse. Mm-hmm. Kyle, wide receivers. Now, this this could end up being a three wide receiver class. 2024 could end up being a three wide receiver class for Ohio State. So let's let's unfurl. Let's 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 open. Let's let's lay out the red carpet. Let's let's bring in four guys. Wow. All right. Let's bring in four in 2025. Uh name a who, who, who name name a couple guys, Kyle, who you think are are decent opportunities at uh wide receiver for Ohio State in 2025. Well, I would guess let's let's just stick with the state of Ohio here and if we're going by current rankings here, let's go let's go with a kid out of Cincinnati here, um Quentin Simmons Jr. Yeah. Uh Quentin Simmons, um this is I'm I'm going here thinking that this kid's a little underrated. 
Uh, you look at the 24 seven sports numbers, the composites, the propers, not super, um, not, not, not super impressive at this time, but you, we all know like late rising Ohio kids, as far as recruiting rankings and all that, um, feel, feels a bit like a slot guy feels a bit like a, um, JSN type as far as, you know, build and whatnot. Uh, Austin says for what it's worth, number one wide receiver in the class is already committed to Bama. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, early commitments and whatnot. Um, another kid, uh, another Ohio kid who maybe a little underrated at this time, but to keep an eye on, uh, out of Olin Tangi, um, Jackson Wiley. I think Ohio State takes lower rated kids this cycle. Austin, once again, you and I have the same brain. Um, I have two guys, state of Ohio, who at this time aren't currently highly ranked currently in this class. Um, again, for what it's worth. Who do we have next, Kyle? Let's let's go big. We we went a couple lower. We went a couple lower. Let's go big on this one. All right. Um, let me look at the list here, Jared. How about how about Quincy Porter? How about Quincy uh, Porter? You know, um, go grab grab Jamie. I think instead. I think I'm I'm thinking I'm making a substitution here. Okay. I'm making a substitution. Jamie French. I assume it's French. It has two F's for some reason. He plays it uh, Mandarin. He's a dog. Yeah, he absolutely is. Jamie French. What what you got info on him, Kyle? I am pulling it up as we speak here. If I can actually type. He, there's links in the show notes, Kyle. Except your link is broken here. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, I know. Here we go. Yep. Jamie, kid out of Jacksonville, Florida here. Um, there is already an early. Um, there is a um, early crystal ball, but Jared, he actually does have a, uh, a commitment date already, an early commitment date for July 22nd see we'll yeah. see <laughs> we'll see how that goes we'll see if it sticks um in, in fact kyle like as far as like early offers and all that goes or and, and early commitments even check this out adrian wilson adrian wilson wide receiver uh out of texas already committed to tcu I'm putting him in the class anyway. I'll say it. I'll say it. I'm putting him in the class. He he recently, very recently committed to TCU. I'm putting him in the class anyway. Have to imagine if that Ohio State offer comes in, he reconsiders. I agree. I th I thought he had a um an offer ready. Did he did he not? From what I read when he visited, um he basically told Ohio State if they'd offer, he'd commit. Um, but Ohio State did not offer at that time. He went to visit TCU. TCU offered, he committed. Got I kind of okay. think Adrian Wilson just didn't want to be, uh, did, just didn't maybe like the recruiting process. He kind of, I think he just kind of didn't want to be recruited. Got it. Uh, but if he thinks a commitment uh, this far out uh, is going to stop people from committing, or from contacting him. Uh, he has got another thing coming. All right, Kyle, we got a big, big in-state kid. I, I only have Ohio State taking one tight end in 2025. They always seem to end up taking two, but for right now, I only have him taken one. This is, this is a big kid from the state of Ohio. Uh, you must be talking about the kid from uh, Lakota West here. Luca Gilbert. Yeah, Luca Gilbert, which if we're, if we're being honest, feels like a basketball name. 
He'll be an O-line guy. You think so? Six seven two thirty three. Uh. Yeah, but only two oh five. I I know he's six seven. I know six seven. It makes you think offensive tackle. Well, that your yours says two thirty three. That's interesting. That's not what mine said. Very interesting. My notes say two oh five. You know, if he just keeps if he just keeps bulking, maybe maybe he's uh, an offensive tackle. Or a defensive end right now, though, he's listed as a tight end. So that's what I'm that's what I'm marking him he's, as. He's going to be listed as an athlete, Jared, just an athlete. <laughs> but he's not. He's currently listed as a tight end. I know. I know. This is 24 seven has him marked as a tight end. I'll take one of those six, seven tight ends, please. I I get that. That's kind of ridiculous. But like, we'll see. I don't know. They, that's what they have him. Tall athletic tight ends are the way of the future, really. But also like tight ends need to block too. I mean, let's let's be honest. That's what Ohio State primarily uses their tight ends for anyway. Why not have an offensive tackle playing tight end? Oh, maybe he's not athletic enough. Uh, is he athletic enough to, to block a defensive end? It's really all mm -hmm. I'm looking for most of the times to scrape off and get a linebacker. I, th I think he can do it. I think he's athletic enough for that. Darnell Washington was a great tight end and he wasn't the best receiver. Yeah. I mean, it's, we can go through a list of dudes who played for Ohio state who fit that description. He can block, but I don't think he can play in space. I'm not asking him to. <laughs> is my point. I want him to block and maybe catch some touchdowns down in the red zone. Yes. Uh, that is my primary goal for him. That's all I'm saying. As long as they're right, who, who, oh, poor, poor Marcus Baugh catch those trays in the chat. Yeah. Who else do you got, Jared? Yeah. Uh, we might need to move a little bit faster here. Um, I got four offensive linemen in this class. It's probably ends up being five, but I have four for right now. Um, Carter Lowe, I, I think, is a, a very notable player to keep an eye on. Um, he's another kid from Toledo, which uh, with, you know, Michigan becoming more and more involved in Ohio recruiting, that becomes more and more difficult. Um, but he's one of the top players in the state of Ohio. Um, He's already 6'5", 290. And again, this is a class of 2025 kid. Already at 6'5", 290. I would love it if we land Sanders, but I doubt it. You know, it's it's a long, long, long way out. But I do have I do have uh, David Sanders as a uh, in this class. I have David Sanders in this class, Austin. And 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 is that potentially i think he goes to georgia austin maybe listen class of 2025 we're we're just doing our best over here <laughs> um is it ridiculous at this point to assume that ohio state gets if you're going to have the show i'm going to share my opinion now and, and listen I agree with you. It's legitimately kind of ridiculous that I'm just calling the shot that Ohio State gets like the number one, depending upon who you ask, the number one kid in the country, especially at a position in which they've not been the strongest at recruiting out of state. Is it ridiculous that I make that prediction? Yes, it is. <laughs> but it's my damn show. The only person who can stop me is Kyle, and he's not gonna. <laughs> he's like jared you want to do a 2025 mock yeah okay <laughs> yeah and ohio state hasn't really recruited well out of um out of north carolina either it's Is that true? Been a, I, I think so like historically it hasn't they haven't recruited a ton of people out of north maybe carolina. the best running back in the country is on Ohio State squad and is from the state of North Carolina, is he not? Okay, okay, okay. Point taken. But 
Okay. Ooh. Listen, I know you're an Evan, Evan Pryor stan, <laughs> but <laughs> Henderson. Henderson's from North Carolina. Isn't he from Virginia? Am I mistaken? Someone Google it. Someone who's not me, Google it. I, I, I was very sure. I was very sure just a moment ago. Now, the second someone says, Jared, you might be wrong. My confidence goes to shit. Jared. Yeah. You're wrong. Okay. Listen, we move forward. We move forward. Um, out of the IMG Academy, I have Caden Strayhorn. Caden Strayhorn. Um, he is an interior offensive lineman, 6'3", 285. Um, not a super highly ranked guy. Uh, I think he's a guy that Ohio State already has a decent relationship with, already has a scholarship offer out to. Um, I, I think, honestly, he's probably as good a option as I can come up with this far out. It's Evan Pryor this from North Carolina. That, OK, so. I feel better. I feel better. You shouldn't. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. <laughs> uh and then i have brandon jacobs uh he is from buford georgia which is just like a football scholarship factory in the state of georgia absolutely um, six seven three ten offensive tackle alpharetta georgia i took one of those six seven offensive tackles yeah i mean it's I mean, Carter Lowe, I think, is very, very realistic. Caden Strayhorn, very, very realistic. Um, David Sanders is just like. That's a wish list item for me, if we're being honest. Brandon Jacobs is a, is a guy you might be able to fight for. Um, I, you know, I'm not like calling that as like a definite shot, but I think that's definitely a guy you can fight for and potentially win. But there's lots of lots of good uh, offensive linemen out there, um, especially in the state of Ohio, uh, to help uh, fill out uh, thoughts on Michael Roski. I really like him. Um, I don't have Michael Roski in my show notes. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Um, I've really only recently started collecting notes for the 2025 class. So I. Oh, wow. Check this guy out, Kyle. 6'7", 260. But listen, he's a giant offensive tackle from the state of Wisconsin. Those dudes don't leave Wisconsin. They, they well, stay at home. Unless they're an interior lineman that once in a blue moon come to Ohio State. That says OT. 6'7"? Six, 6'7 seven? Six, seven is a tackle frame. It, yes. says, it says tackle in the in the 24 7 notes he was originally a guard uh i mean maybe they already had two good six, i mean it's wisconsin they may have already had two other six seven offensive tackles so he just had to play guard as a freshman <laughs> maybe as wisconsin oh boy we need to move forward uh we're up against it kyle um, from, uh, from Ohio edge rusher, Justin Hill, uh, he is from Winton woods, which is in the Cincinnati area. Uh, I think he's a very promising, uh, player already got an offer from Ohio state. Um, I feel pretty good putting him in the mock class at this point. All right. I doubt it considering his school isn't good. I, I, I don't know. I don't know Watama, Wisconsin. They don't have like a Buford or an IMG or a Mater Day or a Trinity prep. Uh, I, I, I don't I don't know Wisconsin high schools. I'm not nearly that big of a degenerate, Austin.
And who did you just mock to Ohio State at end? Uh, Justin Hill from Winton Woods, um, Cincinnati area high school. Um, and then here's a, this is I think this one is also a pretty good opportunity. Uh, Zahir Mathis. Uh, he is another edge rusher. He's from Philadelphia. Uh, he's from Emotep. So not 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 that Philadelphia high school, um, but still uh, an excellent uh, Philadelphia area, high, Philadelphia area, high, Philadelphia area high school. There you go. I'm try- I was trying to talk too quick. <laughs> he is a quicker and isn't he? Yes. In fact, and I assume you're still talking about um, love the land water uh, to land Watford too. Yeah. I, I assume when you said the quicker and you were still talking about Justin Hill, Austin. Yeah. There, there's a possibility he's a linebacker or that he's like a prototypical sort of Jack guy. Um, so yeah, Hill might be, you know, but the, the, the class of 2025 guys, they're, they're still very young he might, you know, he might bulk up and be a true defensive end. He could end up playing linebacker or like I said, the Jack position. He, yes, he's a very good athlete. He's a very good athlete. Defensive tackles, Kyle, who you got at defensive tackle? Well, let's stick with Philadelphia, Jared. Yes. Let's stick with Maxwell Roy. Yep. Maxwell Roy. Um, or you can look in state here. Um, in the Cleveland area, um, Brandon Caesar is another name to look out for. Yeah. Um, defensive tackle, I think, is always one of the the toughest, at least for me, positions to predict in these mocks. Um, but I feel pretty good considering this is how ridiculous this exercise is to be doing a 2025 class at this time. I feel pretty good about these two options. All, All right. right. Uh, Linebackers. I wish you needs to go after uh, a Penza. Yeah, his brother is the Iowa end. I mean, you know, the genetics are there, right? Which sometimes works out. Well, why don't, why don't we stick to the uh, as we're moving on to linebackers here? Let's stick to. Uh... <laughs> Let's stick to Philadelphia still, and let's talk yeah, yeah. about Anthony. I went, I went Philly strong. <laughs> it's all it's always sunny in Philly, at least in the this early in a mock class. I went Philly strong on this mock for some reason. You did. But other name you have here? Uh, no, nope. He's not from Philly here. He's out, actually out, oh. way out in California here. Uh, Weston Port is another name that you have. Yeah. Um, the Anthony Saka is the kid. I, I don't, your eyes must have went wonky. Yep. Uh, the next on the list, uh, linebacker is Anthony Saka. Um, he is from the Philadelphia area. Uh, he's from St. Joseph's. And finishing out, Jerry just wants cheesesteak. I have Maybe. a cheesesteak rant, but we're already like pushing the the time limit on the show. So we'll save it for another day. Um, going time back to or, Illinois. Or tweet limit. What's that? Oh, tweet limits. Don't get another thing not to get me started on, Kyle. <laughs> Christian Pierce, uh, linebacker uh, from Oak Lawn, Illinois. Um, he goes to a high school called Brother Rice, which is. Just one of the more interesting uh, high school names I've heard in a while. Um, again, talented Illinois guy. Um, as Esquire says, we really should own Illinois. And I agree. Why don't we own Illinois recruiting? Let's go get Christian Pierce. Um, and if you're wondering, is he related uh, to 2024? Uh, no, the 2024 Pierce and 2025 Pierce, not at all related. All right, and uh, moving on to the corners here, some some names to keep an eye out for here. No, Austin. Uh, if we stick to the state of Ohio here, we got Trey McNutt. Yeah. Out of Cleveland. Uh, should, should be noted, uh, marked as an athlete. 
Um, but I'm, we're calling him a corner for now. We're calling him a corner for now. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one's this one's going to be a tough battle because he's already um, very very hard going to um, going over to Notre Dame, but bets arguably the best player in the state of Ohio here. So you you got to try to keep him. No, he's state moved here, on right? to the next guy, Austin. Uh, with Dorian- McNutt, McNutt's definitely coming to Ohio State. How he, he lives in Ohio. He has nuts in his last name. He has to come to Ohio State. Those are just the rules. Yes. Kyle is talking about Dorian Brew right now. Yes. Dorian Brew. Yes. There's he's Notre Dame has been pushing hard. He appears to have no appears Austin. to really like Notre Dame here. I don't know how much Ohio State's really pushed early on here, but but you know, but you know that when Ohio State is sending Brian Hartline to go recruit him, <laughs> that's, and Terry Lawn is there too. Yes, yes, yes. Been pushing hard. Yes, yes, Evan. Stiff competition. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask both of you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> all right jared what, what do you got for safeties <laughs> oh i don't think we we didn't finish the corners um oh we did <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh you also got in here um what are the best corners in the country here <clears throat> uh devin sanchez out of houston yeah. Call, calling a shot there calling a shot there then that last one you have here, Mark um, Zachary, the fourth out of Indianapolis. Yeah, it, I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you're a top player in the state of Indiana, you're in state for Ohio State. I don't make the rules. I, I, I make the rules, but. If you're a top player in the state of Indiana, it's your duty to come play football at Ohio State. The, yep. Those are the rules. I didn't write them. I did write them. They're my rules, but everyone needs to adhere to them. Can we start calling him Quattro now? Um, I, you'll have to ask his mom. All right. And the uh, safeties here, Jared. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll start with the, the commit here. Uh, John Tay Gilbert. Yeah. Who uh, seems yeah. like, forever ago that he's committed yeah yeah and like don't do not let the fact that he's already in the class distract you from how great he is he's a five-star player top 25 out of everyone in the country um the the real play here will be keeping him he's legitimately one of if not the best safety in the country uh he's from atlanta um you you just got to be able to hold on. You just got to be able to hold on. Yep. Another kid you have here, Jared, is... Uh, Pickett is the obvious number one. For now. These yeah. things change. And the other kid you have here, Jared, is uh, Kanoa Winston out of the D.C. Yep. area. Yep. Um, I don't have, like, a, like a, a, a huge breakdown here. Um, I almost want to like place th- th- this would be a great duo this would be an amazing duo just so we're clear if you could get both of these guys at safety it's a huge huge win at the safety position huge win at the safety position um all right that's that's our mock class um just want to name check a few more guys here uh, running back Marquise Davis, quarterback Ryan Montgomery, wide receiver, uh, also last name Montgomery. Um, Kyle already mentioned Quincy Porter, uh, offensive lineman Maddie Augustine, offensive lineman uh, Raphael Green or Raphael Green. Either I've seen that name pronounced either way. Jaden Clark, um, Offensive lineman, Ed Rusher, Landon Merritt, defensive line, Chris Burgess, defensive line, Trent Wilson, linebacker, TJ Alfred, uh, linebacker, Madden Ferriamo, linebacker, Jonah Williams, defensive back. Um, I nope, I, I have him in the notes twice for some reason. Um, defensive back, Ethan Lawn Long and athlete Emery Winston. 
no kicker. Yeah, no. Did, why? They just end up, I mean, for punter anyway, they just end up getting some Aussie kid that we hadn't heard of before. Like, there's, there's, there's no reason for me to even attempt kickers or punters at this point. I have seen that name pronounced either way. Jared trying to save himself 2023. <laughs> no. Raphael can also be pronounced Raphael. It's just regional, I guess. I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those names that's spelled the same. It's like Megan and Megan. They're pronounced the same, but depending upon where you are in the country, it might be pronounced Megan. It might be pronounced Megan. Raphael or Raphael. I don't know what to tell you. All right, Kyle, that's it. That's our mock class. Um, do I, you, do I want to run down the mock again? Let's run down. Uh, quarterback, Travian St. Clair. Running back, Jordan Davis. Uh, running back slash athlete, Bo Jackson. Uh, wide receiver, Quinton Simmons. Wide receiver, Adrian Wilson. Wide receiver, Jackson Wiley. Wide receiver, Jamie French. Tight end, Luca Gilbert. Offensive tackle, Carter Lowe. Offensive tackle, David Sanders. Offensive tackle, Braden Jacobs. Interior offensive la uh, lineman, Caden Strayhorn. On the defensive side, Justin Hill and Zaheer Mathis at end. Defensive tackles, Maxwell Roy and Brandon Caesar. Linebackers, Weston Port, Anthony Saka, and Christian Pierce. Cornerbacks, Mark Zachary, the fourth. Devin Sanchez, Dorian Brew, cornerback slash athlete, Trey McNutt. Uh, safety, Jonte Gilbert, and safety, uh, Kinawa Win uh, Winston. 25 person class I have mocked for for 2025. Perfect. Uh, you know, gangland, I sort of said that. <laughs> King you are. <laughs> I mean, here's. I mean. I mean, it kind of just it kind of it's slightly different. It's slightly different, but ultimately kind of pronounced pretty closely kyle uh that's it that's the end of the show do you have anything in kyle's corner um well we talked about kj bowden uh making his decision about a month from now uh talked about aaron nolan getting his fifth uh star in the 24 7 composite uh yeah Oh, my channel. Okay, I, I can go through this here. All right, so we have freshmen and their jersey numbers have now been posted here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brandon Enos. This will be number 11. Uh, Lorenzo Ooh. Styles will be 16. He's Carnell not a Tate. freshman, but he's new. Yeah. Carnell Tate will be 17. Um... Luke Montgomery will be 51. Will I'm just going to say this right now. Carnell Tate and Brandon Ennis, th these will be their only years with two digits in their numbers. Just just go ahead. Go ahead and get those pictures now. Just just pointing that out. Uh, let's see. Who, who, who else do we need? Uh, Malik Hart Hartford is number 25. Uh, just going down oh, the list here. Steve, Austin anybody... pointing out that 11 is still a pretty solid number, seeing as it how is. it's JSNs. It is, yeah. And Olave only wore the 17 the one year, right? Or did he wear it for two? But he, but he definitely made their single number switch. Noah Rogers will be 80, and. Yeah, I, th I think I think those are I think those are probably the big names that I'm I'm seeing here, though, Jared. No, no one getting a single digit from what I hear there. Yeah, no, no single digits here. Interesting. Interesting. Simpson Hunt wearing 15. Yeah, Jamie uh, Kleinholz wearing 12. That's a good number. I feel like 21 is a good number. I like a good low 20 number, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 
Those are all good numbers. There we go. Yeah, uh, yeah, a bunch of those we already had as far as yeah. just because they were spring enrollees. Yep, yep. All right, cool. No, that's that's it, Jared. That's that's all I got for for today. Awesome. Um tonight's ending music. Um, I believe. Yeah, let's play this. Um, this is by a band called Harbor. Um, spelled H A R B O U R. Oh wait a minute, Switchblade playing the Vapors tonight. Ahem. Uh, sure. Let's do Switchblade by playing the Vapors tonight. By request from Austin. Um, who has now threatened to unsubscribe twice this episode. Boy, who cried wolf, Austin. Boy, who cried wolf. It's twice. <laughs> it is twice tonight. McNutt. Fair. You know what? That's fair. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll do Harbor next week. We'll do playing to vapors tonight. Uh, this is switchblade by playing to vapors. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are playing to vapors.